right, so today we have our uh, Mabco crate short block that I got about a year ago and I really just got it to do a review and from an honest perspective and uh, just tore down went through it but then I kind of just bagged it and put it in the corner of the garage and um, recently I've had some comments and personal messages come through asking you know how this engine ran and um, kind of what's going on with it so I guess I decided well might as well build this thing and go ahead and put it in something and see how she does so everything checked out on the bottom end pretty good when we went ahead and did our review so I'm confident um, it'll be pretty decent but um, anyway it's a uh, Christmas Eve day it's about 10 15 degrees and I forgot to turn on the, my heater which is awesome but um, you know here in Iowa it's snowy you can't really do anything with any of your uh, <laughs> decent cars so it's what we like to call engine building season so today we're, I'm kind of in the middle of putting this together and I thought it's a good opportunity to make a, uh, a push rod length video and kind of how to get your proper push rod length order those in and um, check for the proper geometry um, on your valve stem and whatnot so uh, today we're going to go ahead and work through that so without further ado here we go so jumping right in here i know you're going to want to ask about uh, these cylinder heads and what they are you know um, basically they're a budget unit that i went with because the whole idea behind this mabco deal is uh, budget performance but at the same time we want to keep our reliability i'm really big on that so these are very nice they uh skip white performance out of tennessee gets these in as bear castings they work work them over all the machine work um, and all that's very well done all your valve stems are the same height which you'll see why that's important here in a minute and um, i'm just very impressed with these so that's how skip white performance out of tennessee and i think i got um, both the cylinder heads for just over a thousand dollars maybe a thousand thirty bucks so uh, really nice units there moving forward i'm going to get everything uh, set up and set in place and we'll go through and check this out all right so now we have everything set up and prepared to check our valve train geometry on our intake valve on our engine here and now i'm just gonna um, go ahead and walk through some of my setup here and um, kind of my reasoning behind it i guess so the first thing that i'm sure you've noticed which i'll just address right away is i have different valve springs on these two that I'm gonna go ahead and check so um, kind of my reasoning behind this is for one um, our push rod length tool really isn't that strong and if you hit it with these triple valve springs it's just gonna be a bad day and mess that unit all up so these kind of help to allevi alleviate that excuse me um, another nice piece about these is that the spring pressure isn't enough that we're pushing down on the cup on our lifter if you see here if I give it some pretty significant effort, I can get that cup that's inside the lifter to move down. And if you know we're factoring that in, that's giving us a false reading. And we're gonna wanna mathematically figure that when we go and determine our preload, which we'll get all into that in a bit. Um, another thing, um, kind of for the same reason where we wanna figure it mathematically, is we don't have a head gasket in here. And we'll take that compressed thickness and um, take that into account in our measurement but I'll get all into that in a bit and that's a bit later after we get our proper pattern and obviously so I got my head all torqued down uh, my my rocker studs on here and my guide plates everything's lined up so that rocker is running true right on um, you know it's not left or right of our valve stem so that's in good shape now the final thing I want to touch on here is your uh, your push rod tool and this is why the comp is really a nice unit now i'm sure you see that line in the center and if you look really close you can see the line on the center on the top piece now um, for every full rotation it's 50 thousandths of an inch so that's very nice for um, figuring your push rod length and it's pretty exact so um, what i like to do is go ahead and start with the stock measurement of your push rod and then um, just adjust a turn at a time from there but I've already figured this so um, on this guy in particular I got uh, nine turns out on it and it should pattern up nice now um, I don't have everything all buttoned down I'm just gonna walk you through the process 
So we want to go ahead and just turn our rocker nut on down until it touches just to where it seats. We don't want to put any pressure on it. All right, so now it has resistance. We don't want to force anything. And oh, one of our most important parts here. Now I've already patterned up, or I guess colored in the tip of our valve stem. But basically, and I'm left-handed, so this is kind of interesting here with my right hand. But basically what you want to do is go ahead and color in the top of this valve stem. Now a lot of people say to use a permanent marker but um, I found that a dry erase marker works a lot better and shows a pattern, at least on these lighter um, springs that I like to use, which also I got these from, just from my local hardware store. They have spring sets and um, they work out pretty nice. Should be easy for anyone to find. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna turn the engine over and we're gonna go until that intake lifter goes up obviously I must have to go full rotation here so now you see that unit is starting to move up that uh, lifter cup isn't being pushed down so we're not getting any false readings there and you really have to appreciate on a roller cam just how aggressive uh, that lift rate is there so now we've kind of reached our dwell point and it's going to want to come back up so this is kind of interesting I normally need two hands so let me set the camera in another position and I'll continue to explain but basically um, my spring is not enough to overcome my rocker so I kind of just put a little pressure on it so it, um, we get a pattern on it when everything comes back up so let me set the camera up here all right so get this guy out of the way so as I'm rotating the engine, I'm just putting a little pressure on it, and that way the uh, valve stem follows our rocker on its way back up. And now, um, with that, we're done, and we can go ahead and get a look at our pattern. All right, so now we can take our rocker nut off. And again, what's nice about this is we just solely measured um, our push rod length and we don't have anything that can distort our reading into that process. So if you look really close you can see that let's see if we can get a marker here we're running right in the center of that uh, of that valve stem for the most part so um, you're just not gonna get a push rod any closer than that and that is in pretty good shape so now that we have our length which I know that that is nine turns let's sit down and uh, I guess we'll work through the math on this and find our find our final um, overall push rod length that we need to order in all right so I just opted to go ahead and write this out here and um, you know just to give you a better visual representation of what I do when I go through the math so um, here's our we go through our overall push rod length so we had nine revolutions at uh, 50 thousandths per revolution. So that brings us to 0.45. So our um, push rod, just it, the unit itself um, with nine revolutions is 6.250. Now that's actually the length of a stock push rod, but there's other things we need to take into account here. So obviously um, we have our preload, which I'll explain that in a bit, but I like to have about 20 thousandths. And then our head gasket thickness, again, that's our compressed thickness of the particular gasket I'm using, um, which I could easily look up through Summit with the part number. Uh, it's 47 thousandths or so there. So our total push rod length is 6.317. So we're going to have a push rod here somewhere from uh, 6.3 to 6.325. And given my valve spring pressures and the nature of how this engine will be used, um, the uh, budget trick flow push rods will work just fine for me and we can hit that one of those units with this variance. All right, so as you saw above, I touched on this 20 thousandths preload and factored that into my measurement. Now, um, there's a lot of hearsay on the internet and stuff about this preload thrown around, which uh, you may also heard it, hear it referred to as adjusting your valves. Well, um, I always go with 
a 20 thousandths preload because most of your uh, lifters have a 20 thousandths to 60 thousandths range that's ideal and um, I go with 20 thousandths because if you count for thermal expansion that's going to end up being just a little bit more but anywhere between you know a half to three quarters of a turn I feel pretty comfortable with but I'm going to explain this um, right now how this half turn equates out to about 20 thousandths so first thing you need to take into account is your uh, rocker stud so it's a 3 8 24 unit so um, that that 24 at the end stands for threads per inch so if you just take one divide that by 24 you get 42 thousandths and uh, one thread here equals one revolution so one revolution is the equivalent of 42 thousandths so naturally a half turn is about uh, 21 thousandths of preload on your lifter and again um, you know if you count for thermal expansion and everything I really like that 20 thousandths preload but if you're caught in the middle on a push rod length you can go ahead and go to a, a three-quarter preload you know somewhere in that range it's pretty nice and that's the beauty of your hydraulic lifters all right so now that's pretty much it um, I can go ahead and order in my push rods from trick flow and we can um, start assembling this engine. So look forward in the spring to, I don't know, you know, it, it might end up in the old 65 Galaxy and we might have to uh, resurrect that car out of the old barn. So that's just a crime, that thing's sitting like it is. And I think this will be the uh, perfect power plant for it. And that is the perfect car to test this power plant on. So kind of a match made in heaven there. So we'll see how she goes, but that's what we're looking at right now. And I guess, let's get this thing built.